people have written in the comments about the PowerCore Plus 26,800 with USB-C power delivery. But the PowerCore Plus 26,800 are a derivative of this. And I've seen some common comments that made me wanted to do a video on this. And this is one of the, the frustrating aspects of making videos is that I was setting up an experiment to to try to prove if what I thought was happening was actually happening. And that ended up being very tedious and time consuming. I sort of got some of what I thought was, I got a little bit of a result, but it would have taken uh, a lot more time that I don't have right now to try to bring it to some, some sort of demonstrable result. So what I'm gonna do instead is show what I was trying to do, then explain kind of what is happening and this hopefully if if you are so inclined and have all of the necessary equipment this is something that you could do to bring back a pack that refuses to charge or will only discharge or kind of all of the above one of the comments said that they had had one of these packs or a similar one it had sat for two years and they took it out and they tried to use it and it didn't work letting a lithium ion battery sit for two years without being exercised it's going to likely result in it behaving like that where it just refuses to do anything either because the cells have dropped down to zero volts the device won't turn on at all or it's detected what i'm about to show and also will refuse to operate this is already partially taken apart for speed's sake and the fact that i was already doing some experiments with it. If you want to know how to open this up or you want to see any videos about this thing in more detail, there are plenty of them on my channel and I'll link to them all in this video. But I'm just going to separate the battery from the plastic shell and then we just have this right here. And what we're looking at here is a 2S 4P configuration. So there are four cells in parallel and then two of them in series. If you want to know why, Again, see all the linked previous videos. What's going on here is that there is a battery protection center tap that is set up to protect the cells. What it's doing is it's looking at the intermediate voltage between the two cells that are in series. So it's between this and the common. There's a battery plus, the battery protection, and then a battery negative. What this center tap is for, the center lead is for, is for making sure that the cells are in balance so that the cell on this side, the, the four that are in parallel, so if I go and measure voltage here, which it's currently at 3.36 volts, and the cells on this side, which are currently at 3.161 because of my experimentation, that they're in balance. This one doesn't actually actively manage the cells, meaning if one set of cells is actually sagging too low, that is one half of the, the pack is sagging down too low, it will only charge up to whatever the higher of the two sets of cells report. So in the case of this, because I actually have set up a, wasn't a very elegant solution, but I had to bypass all the electronics and protective circuitry. <laughs> I created a load. These are one ohm resistors, one watt rated. There are two strings in parallel, three of them in series. So it was about five watts, and I just ran this across battery positive and the negative terminal and drained this down till I got it to about 0.2 volts of a difference between the first set of cells in series and the second set of cells in the series. So you can see there's about 0.2 volts difference. And I thought that would be enough to trigger it to go, no, 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 that's too far, and actually result in it refusing to charge or only allowing it to discharge but it actually didn't what it instead did is it started doing its kind of weird slow flashing blink which is different than when it's just low so this to me is indicative of it detecting that something isn't quite right and it's not happy about the cells prior to me actually manually discharging this side these are both within 0 0.01 volts of each other. So even after four and a half years of me using this pack, the cells are very close to each other when they're in operation. So what does this have to do with anything when it comes to the pack not working? If the pack refuses to charge, you can first try doing what I did in the, the initial video that I made on these types of packs, and I'll link that here. If that still doesn't work, which a few have said that it doesn't work for them, then I would check the pack itself, and I would look at the voltages of the cells themselves. 
And so here I'm going to check these four cells that are in parallel are at 3.362 volts. And this set of four cells that are in parallel are at 3.162. If you check the cells and there's a large variation between them, I would say more than 0.2 is, is concerning because I, I've never seen in the numerous times I've taken this pack apart for videos and for just investigations, I've never seen more than a 0 0.005 volt difference between these two. One likely case that I would guess would happen, which I'm not going to demonstrate here because it degrades the cells, is that across either run of parallel sets of cells, you might see something that shows zero volts. I'm just demonstrating it here. It's not actually at zero volts, but you might see that a set of four cells are at zero volts. And in that case, I would not recommend doing anything with those cells. If it was a single cell, perhaps there are ways that even single cell battery packs nudge the voltage up very slowly. But this is a run of four in parallel. I wouldn't recommend doing anything with that. If you get a voltage out of this, and it's, but it's way lower, like one is way lower than the other, say a volt or more off, then that's when I'd recommend considering carefully charging the run of cells that are in parallel back up to approximately where the other set of cells is at. So don't try to charge the whole thing. That means you're not charging across from the battery positive to battery negative. You're not trying to override that and just apply voltage across here because it could very easily lead to an over voltage condition because you'd be applying a current limited 8.4 volts across this. And if it floated up to that, that voltage, then you, you don't know what the individual voltages across these cells are. The better way to do it is to just charge across the individual set of paralleled cells. And so the best way that I can think to do that is to use a bench power supply that is current limited. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just power on the bench power supply here. And what I want to do is to make sure that we start very close to our actual voltage that we measured. So in this case, it was about 3.1 volts. So we're bringing it to 3.1 volts and we're gonna, well, current limit it to about 100 milliamps. So 3.1 volts, 100 milliamps. And what I'm gonna do is take the leads here, we'll plug them in to the output here. And we're going to double check the output of the power supply with that of your voltmeter. So we turn it on, turn the supply on, and we're getting 3.097 volts. Well, we've got it current limited to 100 milliamps. These cells, I mean, there's, there's four of them in parallel. So in this case, I think the maximum charge current I'd go up to is like 1C. I think these are 20, 2600 milliamp hour. We'll just say 2.5 amp hour. So 2.5, 5, 10 amps. You could put easily 10 amps. I could max out this power supply and it would be just fine with that. Now what we're going to do is I'm gonna further remove the high amp clips away from the battery here. Use these lower amperage clips that are rated, they're probably only rated maybe like an amp or two. I'm gonna use white for negative and green for positive. The other reason why I'm doing this is I wanna be able to get the voltage off the meter at the same time. So negative and positive. And we don't want to short this together because <laughs> that would be really bad. Be shorting the battery out. So we see it's at 3.162 volts. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to nudge this just a little bit above that. You could just go right up to like four volts. We're not going to because we don't need to. What we need to do is get this bank of four in line with the other bank of four, which is at about 3.3. And so what I'm gonna do is connect these. That's going off camera there, but you can see that I'm clamping on the positive to the battery, now battery positive for this lower bank here, and then battery negative to battery negative here. And we should not see anything happen. And the other thing I'm gonna measure is current, just to make sure that we don't why did this turn off? That's weird. We've got it set to 3.3 on that recording. Okay, I'll start recording. Durr. And I'm just gonna measure the current going to the battery, which should not exceed 100 milliamps. So I'm just gonna put this here and make sure it's in DC mode. What we have, just one more time, double checking before I turn on the power supply. We're coming from the power supply to the two 
probe tips on the voltmeter just to measure voltage of the battery open circuit quote unquote like it is right now because the power supply is not turned on and then closed circuit once we start applying current to the battery at the voltage where we've selected. Also, we have the wire running through the amp clamp to just make sure that our current is in fact being limited at 100 milliamp. Let's just let it rip. So I'm gonna turn on the power supply. We should see it go into current limit. The cells are gonna accept 100 milliamps immediately and it will limit at 100 milliamps. Yeah, 110 milliamps. Going into the batteries, our voltage is about 3.175. It came up a little bit. If I turn this back off again, it should drift back down again. 3.163. So we'll just, and you can see our set point was 3.3. So if I just nudge this up, nudge it up to 200 milliamps. But we're taking it in slow increments, watching the batteries, making sure that everything is connected correctly, nothing's smoking, nothing's getting too hot, and we'll restart it. 200 milliamps. There we go. DC 200 milliamps coming in. The voltage has risen to about 3.187 volts. And it might sit there for a while because again, we're going across four cells. And I can't emphasize this enough. We're only drawing 0.6 watts. So 624 milliwatts are going into the, these four cells in parallel. If the pack has been sitting for a long time, especially uh, if you're watching with the one that's been sitting for two years, you want to nudge the current up as slowly as possible. That's why I'm not cranking this up to four amps, five amps, six amps to get the voltage to go where I want it. Also, if you increase the current significantly to like two, three, four, five amps to quickly get this up to whatever this is, you're likely gonna overshoot it and you might overshoot it by a lot You'll be messing around trying to get the other set of cells balanced with this set of cells. The aim is to just go slow and steady. I need to get the voltage up a little higher. So I'm going to jump the voltage up to 3.4, even though we're not gonna hit that. And I am gonna increase the current to about 400 milliamps. Cause these cells in this particular case, these cells are all right, starting. We're now at 400 milliamps. The voltage has climbed to 3.215 volts. And our voltage is slowly climbing up here, 3.220. Remember when this thing is normally charging, it's about 30 watts. So split between these two, it's about 15 watts. We're at one tenth of that approximately. We'll let it go a little longer. And then I'm gonna bump it up to about one amp just for a few minutes. Basically they're almost at where we want them, 3.226. But if, if I turn off the power supply, it's gonna swing back down again, 3.184. I'm gonna bump the current up a little bit more to point uh, we'll go up to about one amp. And that's as high as I would go with these cables because they're not really high amperage cables. And here we go, one amp. So about three watts going in. For the sake of editing and recording all this, like I'm not gonna get it to exactly where it needs to be. You just want it to, as close as you possibly can. You wanted to get, get it within 0.2 volts of the other run of cells in parallel. Once you get to that point, then I would say stop give it some time to stabilize, and then try to charge it. That's what we're gonna do here as the last step. We're getting close to 3.315. I think that's probably good. I'm gonna turn it off. It'll stabilize down a bit. I'm gonna turn off the power supply. Make sure you disconnect the leads from the power supply when you're not using it. And we'll carefully disconnect everything. And we will start with a negative on all sides. And then positive. No real reason why to do that. It's just more my personal preference to just kind of go around in a loop and make sure that I got everything disconnected. All right, so let's take a look now at our battery and see what the cells are doing compared to each other. So we'll look at our first set of four cells in parallel. And they are at 3.362. And then this set, which is at 3.202. They're off by a little bit. Again, these are off by like almost it was 0 0.001 volt. What I'm going to do off camera actually is I'm gonna keep slowly bringing up these cells after I forcibly discharge them for the purpose of this demonstration, slowly bring these back up. But what I want to demonstrate in the meantime is that the battery should still work. Let's give it a little test here. Yep, it's, it's still blinking its unhappy light, which is fine because once we we'll go ahead and plug this in, and there we go, it has started charging. 
And we can monitor the charge by taking our probes again. We'll look at our battery voltage across the entire pack, which is 6.919. And then we'll look at chaff side, so 3.518 and 3.414. And so again, what's going to happen if I didn't do anything with this is that this system will likely just charge up until this set of cells hits 4.2 volts and these will not. These will hit probably 4.1 or a little bit less. So the whole capacity of this of the pack is then limited by these run of cells that are slightly undercharged. If you get a brand new pack and you're wondering why it's not charging, it's been sitting for a very long time. I think Anchor recommends charging and discharging this every three to four months. Even in a shipping mode, two years is a very long time to leave this to be sitting and it is likely over discharged. And hopefully the cells are not at zero volts. If they are at zero volts, again, do not proceed with doing any of this. But outside of that, if you do have a voltage on both parallel sets of cells, then I think it's worth giving this a shot with a bench power supply, or you could potentially look to get a lithium ion battery charger, but you gotta be able to control the charge current on that. If you, if you have questions, leave me a comment, let me know. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.